We're on Algebra 1, the fourth piece, 1100. I'm looking at pages 21 through 22, hopefully you did well on your checkup. And we're moving on now to dividing, we're calling it factoring out the greatest common factor. And uh, let's look at some problems that are on pages 21 through 22. So, I'm going to do this the long way first, and I want you to see something here, all right? Eight, we could write as two times two times two times x times x, plus six is two times three times x times y, and then this last term, four y squared, is two times two times y times y. Now what is the greatest common factor? I want to pull out everything that is a part of all of these. This one has a two in it. We also have a two here, two here, two here. So I'm gonna pull out a two. Let's see, can I pull out another two? Well, I could from these two, but not this one. So that's not a common factor of all of them. Can I pull out an X? Well, I can from these two, but not from that one. A Y. This one doesn't have any y, but this one has one, this one has two. So really in this case, the only common factor is just the number two. And now I'm gonna put parentheses and put in here everything that's left. It's kind of like doing distributive property, but in reverse. All right, so we're gonna go back. This is gonna be like the answer to distributive property, and we're gonna go back and see that if I factor out a two, what am I left with? Well, let's simplify this. Two times two is four. X times X is X squared. This, I'm left with three XY. And then this is two Y squared. So what I've done is I've taken a two out of all three terms and pulled it out front. Now I can check my work by doing distributive property. So if I did two times four X squared, would I get eight X squared again? Yes. If I did two times, this should be xy, I'm getting sloppy here. Two times three xy, I would get six xy. And, oops, I did a boo-boo, this should be minus. Did anybody else catch that? Ah, okay. This is why we check our work. Two times negative two y squared would indeed be negative four y squared. All right, see how that works? And that was an easy one. Let's see if we can find the common factor here. What number, let's just look at the coefficients out front. What's the biggest number that we can divide into 4, 8, and 32? Do I see any hands? Yes, 4, good, all right. So let's factor out 4. Now, let's see, do all of these have an A? No. Do they all have a B? They don't all have an A and they don't all have a B. So we actually can't factor out A or B. So what we're left with is everything else. Four times A squared would give me four A squared. Eight A squared, if I kind of like divided that by four, what would I get? Two AB, are you with me? 32 B squared, again, divide by four, and we're left with eight. B squared, that's all there is. Okay, we're done. We don't have to do anything with this. We don't have to factor this into parentheses. We're gonna do fancy stuff like that in a future lesson right now. This is all there is to it, pretty easy, okay? Ooh, uh, what about this one? Do all of these have an A? Yes, they do. This one's A squared, but this one's just A to the one, A to the one. Do they all have a B? Yes, b to the one, b squared, b. How about x, 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 x squared? So what happens here is I can take out an a and a b and an x from all the terms. If I take out a, b, x from this, what's left? All right, I actually have two a's here. So when I take out one of the a's, all I have left is one a. Okay, picture it like this up here. a times a times b times x. So pull out one a, b, x, and you're left with just a. This is like a times b times b times x, right? So if I pull out the a out front, pull one of the b's out front, and pull the x out front, 
than what's left, just B. Now I have to do minus B because of this minus here. And then here I'm pulling out the A, I'm pulling out the B, and this says two X's, but I'm just pulling out one of the X's, and so I get minus X. Now, when you think you're done, don't stop. Go back and check your work. Distributive property, which hopefully you're very comfortable with now, take this times the first term, and you'd see that, oh yeah, that's A squared BX. Yep, that's what I want. Times negative B, A, B squared, X. Yep, that's what I want. And then the last one, this X is squared, but I leave the AB and they're, all, they're both negative. Not too bad, huh? This one's a bit more complicated. All right, let's see. I have a two, a three, and a four. Can I take anything out of two, three, and four? Do they have a common? And actually, no. Because of that three, we can't, I could take a two out of both of these, but I gotta be able to take it out of all of them. Let's see, do they all have an A? Yep, here, yes, yes, they all have an A. How about B, do they all have a B? They all have a B. How about X, do they all have X? All right, the X is gonna be a little bit tricky, I wanna tell you about that, but let's first write down, I can't take out any numbers, but I can take out the A and the B. Now I could take out just X, but actually the greater common factor is the x squared. So here's the rule I always tell my students. When you look at the, the, vari the variable x, take the smallest exponent that appears in any of those terms. Now up here, the smallest exponent was ones, okay? So that's why we did that. But here, the smallest exponent on x is two. So I can actually take out x squared. All right, so let's check here. What do I multiply times ABX squared to get two ABX squared? Do you see how this is exactly the same? What's missing? All that's missing is the two out front. All right, now what's missing to get from here to here? I have the A, I have the B, here I have x squared, and here I have x, x squared, and here I have x to the third, x cubed. And so I need to keep the three, and I need to keep the x here. So let's check it real quick and just make sure. If I multiplied three x times this, I would get three a, b, and then the x squared times x will give you x to the third. Now I promise you when you check your work and you do some of these, you're gonna, you're gonna accidentally have some letters or some numbers in there that shouldn't be in here. And then when you check it, you're gonna realize, whoops, I didn't get that back again. All right, good, stop. Figure out what you did wrong and correct it, okay? Let's look at the last term. I'm taking out the a, I'm taking out the b, and I'm taking out x squared from the x to the fourth. All right, so we subtract those exponents, four minus two, and I'll get minus, I have to keep the four, and now it becomes x squared. Let's check our work. Negative four, x squared times this will give me negative four. I keep the a from here, the b from here. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, and that is what I want, okay? So hopefully by going through and talking our way through these four examples anyways, and then studying the examples that they give you in the PACE, you can do well um, on this section here on pages 21 and 22.